Well, there's a new documentary that was released that exposes the abusive practices within the Duggar family. Uh, many, are, of course, are going to use this to attack conservative Christian doctrine. Others are using this to promote their pet doctrine and say that if you don't practice those things, if you don't believe those things, then you could have these issues as well. And yet others, of course, unbelievers, non-Christians, are going to use this to attack all Christians and say that Christian teaching is really the problem. But nobody's talking about the real issue. Nobody seems to be talking about the real issue, but we're going to talk about that today. Welcome to Truth Transforms. My name is Adam Markley. Uh, we're going to talk about this today, and uh, I'll just say it up front. The real issue is it's a cult. We're not dealing with Christianity. We're dealing with a cult. Uh, that's the main issue. And so uh, the uh, what we're talking about here is Shiny Happy People, a documentary that came out, and this has to do with the Duggars, and I'm going to assume that since you clicked on this, you're already somewhat familiar with them because I'm going to keep this video short. Uh, the Duggars had a uh, show, 19 Kids and Counting. It was a real hit. I didn't really watch it. I think I maybe watched an episode or two. But uh, I've seen some videos on it, and everyone seems to be completely missing the mark. Uh, a video that I watched, a man spent nearly two hours talking about how this is an issue of Arminianism. Yeah, this is an issue of a person's belief in soteriology, the doctrine of salvation. Uh, their their belief in a, a particular doctrine and and the uh, uh, trying to work out the sovereignty of God and the free will of man and how that all works and because of what they believe about that that's the issue and you know what the other issue is it's an issue of their belief on end times their eschatology because they're pre millennial in their eschatology and that's another reason why. <laughs> this stuff has occurred that's just ridiculous and not helpful for anyone uh to to blame it on something that literally has nothing to do with it is really bizarre and so i want to talk about what we're really dealing with all right so obviously the issue is not arminianism of course it's not pre-millennialism uh we've had people believe these things throughout all of christian history uh they believed Arminianism and Calvinism and different doctrines and disagreed with different things. And it doesn't cause abuse in the church. It doesn't cause abuse in the home because they believe particular doctrines. Uh, that's not what causes it. It would be believing things that are not Christian, believing things that are not biblical, believing things uh, that are actually very wicked. That's what would cause this. So it's certainly not Arminianism. It's not premillennialism. It's not even fundamentalism. Uh, certainly, there are different brands of fundamentalism that certainly have uh, a, a similar type of issue where there's a, a, a focus on the externals and not a focus on the heart. And uh, so that is what we're really dealing with. These are the true issues that have caused such, um, such a problem. One is it's a cover up, you know, there's there's uh, things have happened in the home and then it's completely covered up. And why do you cover things up? Because you're not dealing with the heart. Instead, you're trying trying to present a certain type of appearance. You're trying to look a certain way. And this happens in different churches and this happens in different homes. Things occur and uh, people try to cover it up. And this does certainly happen. Uh, it can happen in any religious upbringing, really, where, you know, there's certain things that the church can't know about, so it's completely covered up. Uh, and even if the church does know, it can be covered up because, you know, we can't let that be seen by people where, you know, things could actually be dealt with. And that's the kind of stuff that we that we see. There's also, we're, we'll be digging into other things where uh, these are the sort of things that you would... This is why you, if you have a biblical church uh, and you actually deal with the heart, you both deal with the heart and you deal with externals through things like church discipline. But this was not that kind of setup. Uh, so it's not an issue of those things I mentioned. It's not an issue of fundamentalism. Uh, but there are some similarities in some way that fundamentalism can be expressed. We're not talking about fundamentals of the faith. We're not just talking about believing in 
the fundamentals of the faith, but they're particular brands of fundamentalism uh, where and, 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 and honestly some tendencies of certain maybe denominations or fellowships or just it just it just seems to be that case from everything that I've heard and seen within uh, fundamentalists and we're not and, and when I say that I'm not talking about the fundamentals of the faith I'm talking about uh, those that take it much further that put legalistic rules on things that there's much more of a focus on external things much more of a focus on outward appearances than there is on the heart, than there is on actually issues of the heart. And so what we're really dealing with is sin. No surprise here, we're dealing with sin. This is an issue of total depravity. There are so many people that want to blame things on particular doctrines, but guess what? It comes back to sin. It comes back to allowing that sin to run rampant. Uh, we're dealing with other things as well, like Phariseeism, authoritative leadership, and we'll talk about that. Let's talk about sin first. We're talking about uh, total depravity. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Jeremiah 17, 9 tells us that, and it describes our sinful nature apart from Christ. And it describes the sinful nature even of the Christian that's growing and walking, but still has the sin nature as a part of them because there's a struggle with the flesh, there's a struggle with sin. And if you don't deal with the heart, uh, then you just put external rules on and you try to cover things up and it doesn't take it doesn't take root and it doesn't deal with the heart. Now, I can't talk to whether uh, certain people were regenerate or not regenerate because certainly that's where it all starts. Were they born again? And in a culture like this, many are not going to be born again. Again, we're, we're talking about a cult here, by the way. Uh, and there were particular teachings that they had. And uh, they, these teachings were very authoritative, coming from one man, uh, not coming from a plurality of leaders, not coming from biblical eldership, uh, which is the, the, the next issue. Well, one of the issues that I'm going to get to is authoritative leadership. We're talking about uh, an issue of top-down, one man, one person acting as God, acting as a prophet of God. What he says goes. What he says is the final word. That's what we're talking about. Uh, there was a specific uh, cult following, a specific um, uh, IBLP, IBLP, the Institute for Basic Life Principles. And what he would do is he would take Bible verses and he would twist them and he would twist the application. Now, I've seen two episodes just to let you know. I haven't seen all four and I do plan to watch all four, but I've, I've got a pretty good idea of what we're looking at with two episodes and how this thing is presented. And I'm also going to talk about uh, how it's going to be used, like basically the agenda of the film. It was put together by uh, non-Christians uh, put together by secularists so certainly it is a hit piece there are definitely issues to deal with but it's most definitely going to be used it's going to be weaponized to go after all Christians and conservative doctrines and so here are the doctrines that uh, it, it will certainly be used to to attack uh, basically it's gonna they're gonna use this to attack Bible believing Christians that hold to the fundamentals of the faith I mean that's that's obvious uh, we'll just we'll just lump them all together and say this is an issue with all Christians, and uh, it can most definitely be used to attack all Christians. It's going to be used to attack biblical headship and submission because there were definitely abuses there, and so attacking submission, uh, attacking headship in the home, headship in the church, uh, most definitely anyone that 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 watches this and understands how much that's under attack. It's, it's pretty obvious it would be used to attack that. Uh, definitely, uh, the adherence to biblical sexuality, uh, that's under attack literally everywhere you look, every single turn, open your eyes and it's under attack. So most definitely used to attack that. Uh, that is hated more than anything in the world right now. That is the one thing under attack more than anything else. Uh, it will be used to attack homeschooling. 
uh, most definitely. Homeschooling will be seen as a great evil because we need to indoctrinate the kids. So let's use this film as a way to attack homeschooling. And it will be used to attack parental discipline and church discipline. We can't have any discipline. We can't have any adherence to Christianity. We can't have any Christians actually practice their faith. So those are definitely things that it will be used to attack. And ultimately, from things that I've heard from episodes three and four, which I have not seen yet, uh, it sounds like they interview those that have basically deconstructed from the faith. And I think that the film is being used to try to deconstruct Christians from their faith. And so if you're a Christian and you watch this, uh, you should watch this with, you should be able to watch this and just see. I hope that you can see. I hope that you're discerning enough to see that it's a biblical truth thrown at you and then it's twisted. You'll just see biblical truth, but twisted. Biblical truth, but twisted. Biblical truth, but warped. And the perversions and twisting of scripture uh, and practices get worse and worse as it progresses. That's how these things work. That's how films work. That's how narratives work. You have to build up multiple stories. And that's and that's actually what starts happening at the very beginning is there are kind of like multiple, p multiple stories going on at one time. So at the very end of the first episode, we can bring it all down to a great crash at the end. That's just how movies work. That's how film works. You build up certain stories and you do them concurrently so that you can bring them all down to a great crash at the end if that's what you want to happen and then you 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 build on that in the next episode and so uh there's there's a specific engineering that goes in place for that and you need to understand that if you choose to watch this honestly it'd be more beneficial for you to just watch an interview uh with ginger uh, i forget her last name ginger what used to, ginger duggar ginger you know, and she used to be, uh, she, she's daughter, I just can't remember her, her married name. But um, if you watch an interview with her, that would be helpful. And she's got a book out and that would be, uh, uh, that would be helpful for you in, in actually thinking through these things and seeing the teaching, the very warped and perverted teaching of Bill Gothard. Uh, and that's this authoritative teaching that he, that he had. Well, so we're talking about the depravity of man. And uh, let me just get to another passage here. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. 1 Corinthians 2.14. They're spiritually discerned. So a person has to have the Spirit of God. And it's the Spirit of God that has to do a work in that person. So that person has to be saved. They have to be regenerate in order to actually obey from the heart. And even if they are regenerate, which Ginger said she was regenerate in this system, but she was caught up in such a legalistic system that it really messed with her and it messed with her mind. Of course, a legalistic system is going to do that. It puts you in bondage. It's the Spirit of God that has to convict. It's the Spirit of God that sanctifies. It's the Holy Spirit within someone that sanctifies and progresses them. And so uh, if a person does not have the Holy Spirit, then they can do very terrible things and it can be completely covered up, especially when you have a religious system that covers things up. That's what the Pharisees did, and we'll get to that in a moment. But let's go to the next verse here. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. There is a renewing of the mind, a renewing of the heart for all believers in Christ. Uh, I have one more on the depravity of man. Uh, or yeah, this is important. Uh, if you're a Christian, this applies to you directly. Romans 6, 17 and 18. But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed and have been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. Having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. Now, being set free from sin does not mean that you don't sin. It does not mean that a person doesn't fall into sin again. 
but it certainly is not the direction of their life. It's not the tendency that they're always sinning. No, the, ten the tendency is that they're growing and they're bearing good fruit. As Jesus said, one must bear good fruit. Uh, you will know them by their fruit. And this is important here. Obedience from the heart. Uh, there is an obedience from the heart to the law of God. There is obedience from the heart to the commandments of Christ. If it's not from the heart, uh, then it is just a legalistic system. If it's being obeyed, but not from the heart. Christians obey from the heart. And that's uh, the biggest issue when you have externals, wear your skirt this long, uh, don't wear pants, don't do this, do this, do this, and don't do that. Um, and rules, uh, well, rules, if they're biblical rules, are good and guidelines are fine. But uh, when it's adding to scripture and just continually adding and, and those rules get so crazy and so uh, they get to a point where they can barely, they get to a point where they can barely be followed. They can barely be followed. And that's what the Pharisees did with the Sabbath. They made it to where uh, it wasn't just resting on the Sabbath. You couldn't really lift your finger on the Sabbath. You could barely do anything on the Sabbath because they kept adding to the rules. They just heaped on condemnation. They heaped it on uh, condemnation after condemnation. They would just heap these things on. And that is uh, the legalistic that that's a legalistic system that that uh, is shown in this film. Uh, we're seeing Phariseeism. We're seeing uh, that that's exactly what we're seeing. So total depravity. It's an issue of sin. It's an issue of the heart. Phariseeism. These legalistic rules and authoritative leadership. Uh, this is a this man, Bill Gothard. He's a he's acting as a dictator at the very top, and everything stops with him. He has the final say. He has uh, all the answers. Everything's in black and white. He can literally tell you what to do with your life, what to do with your family. The, like he has an answer for everything because people want an answer for everything. And that also seems to show uh, the sinful tendency in man to want an answer for everything and not rely upon the spirit of God and not have walk in the spirit and, and use wisdom and um there's a there's an authority structure there that is that is abused to the greatest degree where it's just well, let me tell you every single small little detail you should do with your life so he makes these rules you don't see a plurality of of godly shepherds who are uh, lovingly shepherding a flock submitting to the word of god saying the word of god is final and supreme and we are submitting to the word and we are coming and we are bringing you the word and preaching the word and teaching the word. And you need to obey the word and we will make illustrations and applications and help you understand the word. And the true Christian wants to obey the word. But in the end, you must use wisdom and wisdom is the skillful application of the word of God. Wisdom is to be able to walk out and and live out what the scripture says. And it there won't be a black and white answer to every single issue. And every single parental issue and raising children, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that just needs to be understood. And uh, that needs to be understood, and that's a major issue in this. And that's and it's partly people wanting that black and white issue because Bill Gothard didn't start uh, by having a rule for every little thing, but he started adding on a rule for every little detail because that's what people want. Uh, and um, that's why pastors can't do that. As why pastors can't, they can give guidance and wisdom and preach the word. And where the word is clear, you teach that, you preach that. But there, there's Christian liberty and there is, uh, there are areas that are gray. And you could 
say? Do you think it's wise if you do these things? But I, uh, you can't have a rule for every little thing. I, uh, people have to live by their conscience. They have to live by their conscience because if they're not living by their conscience, then we're not talking about obedience from the heart. Well, one last thing, I want to talk about what pure religion is because should we just throw the whole thing out because of this? Should we throw out biblical headship? Should we throw out homeschooling? Should we throw out uh, everything that gets twisted? We should, authority structures. I think that's that's going to be a big one as well. There's uh, biblical authority structures, even the umbrella that's used uh, where God is at the top and then man is there, the father, and then the wife under the father. This is a biblical structure. You see it right there in scripture. It's definitely in Ephesians 5 and elsewhere. You, 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 1 Corinthians 11 or 13. Uh, you, you definitely, 11. Um, so it's right there in scripture. It's most definitely biblical. And uh, it's twisted and perverted like all of these practices. And so you can't just throw out these doctrines but that will be the temptation to christians who aren't con who aren't discerning christians who aren't firmly rooted in the truth of god would be potentially to start reconsidering these doctrines start reconsidering the authority of the church start reconsidering pastoral authority and that's exactly what they want from this and so if you're going to watch this you need to do this in a very discerning manner and uh ginger duggar has a book out that would be helpful to read i'll link to a, an interview with her i think that would be helpful for you to see now james 127 i didn't get to this yet james 127 says religion that is pure and undefiled before god the father is this to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world i could have had that on the screen uh, there it is. Religion, that is, I won't read it again, but you see, they don't, they wouldn't like this part at the end, of course, to keep oneself unstained from the world. Most definitely, they would not like that. Uh, the world does not like that. But to visit orphans and to visit widows in their affliction, well, that's fine. Uh, the church can be generous and visit orphans and visit, visit widows in their affliction, and that is true religion. That is a good and godly thing to do. But what happens if a church steals from widows? What happens if there's news of a church of theft from widows and orphans? Well, then we throw it all out, right? Absolutely. We don't visit or widows anymore. We don't, we don't visit orphans anymore. We stop being generous. We completely throw it out. No, we don't. Every reasonable person knows that. No, we don't. And so you don't take a documentary like this that points out abuses and say, boy, we better uh, we better rethink this Christianity thing. We better rethink these conservative doctrines. We better think these <laughs> rethink these biblical doctrines. Well, let me tell you, if you rethink that too much, you'll be an apostate. OK, I'm sorry, you'll leave the faith. So you better. <laughs> but think through it uh, practically. Think through it biblically. Be firm in your conviction of what the Bible teaches and dig deeper in scripture if you're shaken in any bit from watching this or know someone that's going to be shaken from watching this. I haven't seen the third and fourth episodes, and I believe that uh, from conversations that I've seen, people are doing seem to have a lot of processing. There seems to be a lot of processing uh, of this sort of thing. Well, any sort of major abuse does that. But guess what? This is a cult. This is not Christianity. So that's what we're talking about. We're dealing with a cult. And people, of course... I uh, want to treat it as Christianity and the world wants to conflate it as the same thing as Christianity, but it's got nothing to do with Christianity. And that's the biggest, I guess, one of the biggest takeaways is that it's got nothing to do with Christianity. So don't let it shake your faith one bit and don't let it shake uh, those people around you. Uh, don't let it shake their faith. Be sure to share this with someone. Uh, to help them, if they're watching this, share this on social media. I'd appreciate it. Let's get the word out. Help this reach more people. Uh, my name's Adam Markley. You've been watching Truth Transforms. The goal of Truth Transforms is to transform hearts and transform minds through the truth of God's word. 
Uh, go ahead and like this, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, share this with someone, like this. That all helps with the algorithm to reach more people. And then tune in for the very next episode uh, where I'll be talking about more things like this. God bless you, and I'll see you then.